Well, this shore is progressing fast. Just like my kitten. Look at that. It's just a full on cat. What's happening to you? Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Achano. Welcome back to another Hazel devlog, and I've got some more exciting features, as always, to show you guys. Now, this stuff is more along the lines of the physics kind of 3D physics stuff that we've been working on, specifically Peter 1745, I should say, because the majority of this work really ties into what he's been doing. So last time, I showed you guys 3D physics working in general. I'll have the devlog linked up there in case you haven't seen it. And today, I want to build off of that and show you an actual 3D scene that we can kind of walk around in. Now, I haven't had much time time to author content really for Hazel at the moment. So this stuff is very hastily kind of put together just for demos really. But we basically have a demo now that shows a kind of first person character controller walking through a 3D world, which I think is really cool. So the way that this works is pretty simple and it's really kind of extensible as well. There's essentially a capsule collider component that you can add to some kind of object or entity inside Hazel. And then you can hook that up with a C-sharp script that basically will just send out various impulses and forces essentially when you like hit the WASD keys. And then we've also got a camera entity that is essentially being set to wherever the mouse should be based on the player entity. We don't have parenting and like child entities yet, so we can't just make the camera a child of the I guess, player entity just yet, although we are working on that. So at the moment, this demo really is just showing a separate camera entity, a separate player entity, a player entity which has a capital collider and a C-sharp script, which is like our FPS controller C-sharp script, interacting with or, and controlling essentially a camera entity, which is your actual camera. The cool thing about all of this is that all of the kind of interaction that happens when we actually hit the play button is completely just C-sharp scripted. I mean, we have obviously the physics kind of runtime as well, and we're simulating those physics, but every, every kind of response to the mouse and to WASD keys, the space bar to jump, all of that stuff is completely programmed in C sharp. So it's really quick to, quick to iterate over. There's no need to like recompile any C++ code and it's not even integrated as part of a component. It's just scripted in C sharp. So that's really cool because it feels like it's actually something that was made inside Hazel. So I've got a couple of scenes to show you and I can't wait to do that. But first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. For those of you who have not heard of Skillshare, Skillshare is an amazing online learning community where millions of creative and curious people from all around the world can come together to learn a new skill in really short, concise, beautifully, just beautifully produced bite-sized episodes of content. I'm really happy to continue working with Skillshare because it honestly is one of my favorite educational platforms online. Whether you're interested in various kinds of art, such as illustration, photography, videography, that kind of stuff, or productivity, business management, marketing, I mean, Skillshare has you covered pretty much anywhere. It's honestly so easy to just type in something you wanna learn about into Skillshare and then see a bunch of classes pop up. I mean, I've been doing this pretty often. Earlier in the week, I mentioned that this year was the year of content. Specifically, I've just embarked upon the journey of making a game. That's quite a complicated process and it involves learning so many new skills that I just haven't learned before. So being able to hop onto Skillshare and learn about things like how to create awesome concept art or how to get better at writing, that kind of stuff I have really, really enjoyed. Coming in at just under $10 a month for an annual subscription, Skillshare is an extremely affordable way to actually further your knowledge. And they've been nice enough to offer the first 1,000 of you who click the link in the description a free trial of Skillshare Premium so that you can explore your creativity. Huge thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I think they're gonna be really useful to me this year. Okay, so first person controllers, capsule colliders, Fizz X. Let's take a look at all of this. Okay, so what I've done here is put together a fairly basic scene. As I mentioned, unfortunately, don't have too much time to create actual good looking content for Hazel just yet, although that is the plan for the year. So here we have a basic mesh. This is just a single mesh. And then we also have this kind of player entity that's a capsule collider. As always, I'll take you through what this scene actually consists of because that's both a good way to show Hazel's workflow as well as actually show what goes into making a scene like this and how everything fits in together. And as always, if there's something, if there's something with this that feels a bit off to you or you think that might potentially be a more intuitive or easier way to do this, please let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for feedback. So as I mentioned, there's really only two real, I guess, entities in this scene. There's this kind of level mesh that I put together in Blender and like 
set up materials for and textured and did all of that stuff. And there's also this player capital collider. So the level itself is very simple. It's a basic entity with a, with a transform and a mesh component, which of course is this mesh, as well as a static rigid body and a mesh collider on it. So physics will automatically generate this kind of triangle mesh for us from uh, the actual geometry here. So we have a perfect mesh that we can collide with. This mesh, as you can see, is fairly simple. I mean, obviously there's some extra vertices here because I, as I mentioned, did not did, did not pay attention to like the topology or anything like that for this mesh. Just made it in like uh, in five minutes. But ultimately speaking, it's a very simple mesh and that's really good for, for use as a collision mesh. There is an option to override the mesh and actually pick a different mesh. This could be useful uh, for, you know, if you have a really detailed mesh, but you want the collision mesh to be less detailed. At the moment, you literally have to pick like a different file, but in the future, this will probably, that there'll probably be an option to pick a sub mesh from within the actual FBX file or whatever mesh asset file you're using, because it's pretty common to actually put, put both the collision mesh and then the actual kind of mesh you want to render uh, into one file, into one asset. Okay, so that's the main level, but then we also have the player. The player is uh, also also has a mesh component on it with a transform component, of course, and then a script, which we'll get to in a minute. It's got a dynamic rigid body with some settings set up and some constraints as well to freeze the rotation. And then there's also a physics material and a mesh collider on it as well. There actually shouldn't be a mesh collider. I thought there was a capsule collider on it. So apparently I did end up putting a convex mesh collider on this instead of a capsule collider, which is a bit odd. Usually you would use a capsule collider in this case, but it doesn't matter too much. I'll still show this example. In the other example I prepared, I've got a proper capsule collider. I didn't even realize that. Anyway, so this is like a basic setup for kind of, uh, you know, having this player object. But of course, everything, as I mentioned, is coming from this FPS player script, which contains a whole bunch of parameters that we've exposed into the C++ code. And the result is if I hit play, you can see that I can move my mouse around. We can jump into this kind of play mode. We can actually look at the, the capsule that is us, as well as look around the world. And of course, the WASD keys and the space key as well uh, will jump. And so we can actually move around this world, which is pretty cool. So I can, uh, you know, I've created this little obstacle course that I can jump on um, and everything looks pretty nice. So there you go. That is uh, a basic little FPS controller that we have here. Um, and the ability to walk, to walk around a 3D world. Now, of course, because this is generated from the actual mesh, you could make any mesh you want here and just jump into it and explore it like this, which is actually a really nice way of, of uh, you know, I guess feeling scale of a scene that you're working on because being able to walk around uh, inside the actual scene rather than look at it from like an editor style camera is extremely beneficial. And if we, if we hit escape, we'll get our mouse pointer back. Um, this is, hasn't been um, fully ironed out yet. And then we can hit the stop button, of course, and return to this. So that's pretty cool. If I um, drag this up somewhere more interesting maybe and spawn us into the world from here, that should be pretty cool. Let's hit play. And there you go, we fall down and then we're here now. Okay, so that's a basic kind of FPS controller inside Hazel now, which I think is pretty cool. Now let's take a look at the other scene. Now the other scene that Peter originally made was this uh, sponsor scene, which makes sense because we've been using the sponsor model for a bunch of testing. Why not use it to test the kind of uh, FPS controller as well? So over here inside our player, you can, sh you can see that we've actually got a real capsule collider here. Uh, the, I don't think the uh, preview kind of mesh renders correctly for the collider, which is what the green mesh is, but we'll ignore that. Um, we can set a capsule collider with a radius and a height and whether or not it's a trigger or an actual real kind of physics entity. Uh, and then, I mean, we've got a directional light, a skylight and a camera as well. And that's one thing I didn't mention in the previous scene, by the way. The script actually looks for an entity called camera and uh, controls the camera that way. So the, the script that's attached to player will actually change the camera's translation and orientation to match that of what the player should be looking at. So that's how this is actually hooked up. And then of course we do like all of the physics stuff such as triggering the forces uh, from within the C-sharp script as well. So if I hit play on this one, you can see we have a, a similar scene. This camera actually is a little bit um, narrow field of view, but more or less the same kind of scene. I think there's a bit of an offset applied here as well. And uh, yeah, we can actually walk around Sponza, which is pretty cool and even jump down here and, uh, and explore it from this way. So this is, um, where we're at in terms of, uh, I guess, all the uh, FPS controller and being able to actually use NVIDIA physics for, um, you know, for uh, more than just 
simulating bouncy balls, but now actually creating like a world that we can collide with and uh, and go into, which is of course pretty cool. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little look at all the new stuff inside Hazel Dev. If you liked this video, please don't forget to hit the like button below. If there's certain areas inside this video that you want me to expand on and go deeper into, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget that you can also help support Hazel's development and everything that you see me do here on YouTube by going to patreon.com slash the churno. You'll get access to this exact code so that you can run it yourself, as well as a huge backlog of live streams and other exclusive content to check out. Huge thank you to all of you for your support and huge thank you to Peter1745 as well for all of his amazing work on all of this. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check the link in the description below for your free trial of Skillshare Premium and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.